You're listening to That Gets My Goat. I thought you were better than that. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of That Gets My Goat. My name is Big Anklevich. And I'm Rish Outfield. And I guess this is one of those episodes that's severely dated or overdue. <laughs> um, it's definitely overdue, but I guess we have the whole summer, really, to make this episode before anything comes along to really throw it out of whack to make it too late to do it so we're gonna do it because we got a couple uh, a couple more weeks before the fall season comes along of course depending on how quickly we get it edited and out there it may already be too late but anyways we're just gonna go on the presumption that it made it on time yeah we're gonna talk tv Uh, We're going to talk a couple of shows that we've mentioned on That Gets My Goat before. And we've done a few specific episodes just about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is the, uh, basically, it's the only Marvel TV, oh, I guess you could say there's the Daredevil show out there. But that, does that count as a TV show? It's made by ABC Studios and Marvel Studios. But it, it, it doesn't feel like a TV show. Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't break for commercials. It, it, I mean, I guess it feels right. like a TV show in the same way that you know, that Game of Thrones does or whatever. But yeah, it just... but the Game of Thrones is actually broadcast on a channel, whereas this one was never broadcast. It was always just it was it's it's like a TV show that was released directly to DVD, but it's way better than those movies that you used to get released directly to DVD slash vhs but anyways yeah the the tv show that marvel has out there is uh agents of shield at the same time dc has shows going and and their actual uh roster is expanding much faster than marvel which is kind of strange considering that marvel has kind of been ruling the roost as far as you know superhero stuff in media these days i guess you could say dc has been really good in cartoons but otherwise they've mostly been being beat by marvel but uh, right now they've got arrow which is a green arrow show they've got flash and i think starting this fall they're going to have the super girl it's just called Supergirl, probably so they're going to have that uh, which is going to be? But they've also got the, what's it called? The oh, something right, of tomorrow. Constantine. Okay, well Constantine's come and gone. No, the the show with the Adam and Firestorm. Oh right. Something of tomorrow, isn't that what it's called? How how is it that we're so behind in making this? I can't even remember the names of the characters anymore. <laughs> yeah, I I remember seeing a trailer for that, and what they're is that? like going to be. Hot girl on that show and everything, isn't there? Apparently, yeah. It's like a Justice League show for television. With only the lesser (laughs) characters involved. But I know Tomorrow is is in the title, right? Well, I don't know. I I just know that there is such a show out there. Oh, Legends of Tomorrow is what it's called. It... (sighs) And I and this isn't it isn't fair. I hate it when like my friends' wives do this, where they're like, "I don't like that guy because he was a bad guy in a movie I saw one time." So anytime he shows up, I want to watch a movie with him. That is my impression of all wives. Okay, but Brandon Routh <laughs> plays the Adam slash Ray Palmer. Uh huh. And I cannot get past the fact that that is Superman. Whenever he shows uh-huh. up, I'm like, but guys, guys, that's Superman. Why don't you just ask Superman to fix it? <laughs> and I, yeah, I can't get past it. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's funny. Did you not? What, what was your reaction when he'd show up on The Flash? I mean, A, um, he looked like Iron Man. He was dressed as Iron Man and all that. But his face. Right. Yeah, it was like Superman put on an Iron Man suit and decided to not be as tough as he could be. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I guess you got to get used to that. I've, I guess I've grown used to it because I keep seeing all sorts of people from other shows. Like, for example, this guy at work was just talking about it because I, I gave him, I loaned him my DVDs of Pushing Daisies. 
Now, I only had the DVDs of the first season, but he liked it enough that he, uh, through Netflix, got the DVDs for the second season. And he got to the point where, uh, I want to say the guy's name was Emerson Cod, the private detective that uh, was on the show. <laughs> they have an episode where there was a murder or whatever that involved this dog training lady, right? And the dog training lady would always click their little clicker. Like she was, she would train Emerson Cod to do that. If he'd started saying something that she didn't want to hear, she would click his clicker, her clicker, and he would stop. Basically, she was training him just like she was training a dog. So anyway, that actress showed up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And uh, when I saw her, I was like, oh my gosh, it's the girl i've seen her in something else that i couldn't figure out what i even went to her imdb page and looked and didn't find what it was that i recognized her from but yeah this this friend of mine from work was like yeah i kept every time i see her and she starts talking i expect her to pull out her clicker and click the button to make whoever to make edward james almost or make uh colson shut up or whatever but yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing that you get a lot with shows like these. Especially a Joss Whedon show. Oh my gosh, like, every uh, character comes back from a previous show. I mean, our head of the Inhumans was one of the dolls in the dollhouse. And Daniel Whitehall was one of the handlers from the dollhouse. And, you know, it just keeps going and going down that list. Somebody's always been something else when it's a Joss Whedon show. So, you know, I, I don't know. I guess I'm used to that. So I don't, I don't get too weirded out when I see Brandon Ralph in there as, as uh, not Superman. Kind of like seeing Chris Evans as, uh, as Captain America. I remember seeing one of those How It Should Have Ended thing where they had, uh, they, they were making Captain America and they're doing it and, He's like, okay, I think it's ready. And the doctor goes and he pulls open the pod and Chris Evans is in his, his Fantastic Four costume. And then he closes it real fast. He goes, wait, 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 it's not quite ready. And then he pushes the button, like more steam comes out. Then he opens it up. Oh, okay, now he's ready. Okay. Sorry, I just, uh, only, only one in 10 million babies are born to be Superman. And True. You know, he was one of them. Yeah, it makes me kind of sad that he never really got a chance to continue on down that line. I mean, we went to a convention in, in was it in January, the one that you and I went to? Uh-huh. And he was walking around there, do you remember? Yeah. And I was just like, holy cow. I, I, just, I, I looked at him and I, I wanted to thank him for all the times he prevented the Earth from being destroyed he just <laughs> he looks so much like superman yeah and the funny thing is he didn't even make any money when he saved the world from solomon grundy sometimes i despair man the world will never see another man <laughs> like him <laughs> yeah it's funny because we out of the blue my three-year-old son insisted that we put in this dvd the other day which was the documentary about Superman sure. that came with, there was some box set of some sort. Yeah, it was made in conjunction with Superman Returns by Warner Brothers. Right. And yeah, it came out in that big Superman box set, or you could just buy it by itself. Yeah, so it was this super exhaustive documentary, and it was just like, you know, Superman was created by this, and they, they, they had this version of Superman in the movies, and... They had the radio show and they had, you know, and they just went through like every iteration of Super, even including a, a, a show that was called Super Pup, I want to say, where they made a TV show where Super Pup, who was actually, unbeknownst to others, mild-mannered Bark Bent, <laughs> the newspaper reporter... And it was a bunch, it was played by little people wearing dog masks. Uh, it, just some of the ridiculous things, anyways, that happened. Did you know that there was also a musical version of Superman? Sure. Yeah, look up in, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. Yeah, and they had Leslie Ann Warren in it as... Uh, as Lois Lane, yeah. As Lois Lane. But anyways, yeah, we watched that out of the blue. And the funny thing was my son 
fell asleep on the couch about 15 minutes in. Of the, the three-hour documentary. Uh, yeah, but uh, I wound up watching the whole thing. And yeah, it, it leads all the way up to, and then finally in 2006 or whenever it was. I think it was six. Know, Superman was finally back on the big screen and they talked about it like, oh yeah, it was, it was the best version of Superman yet. And oh, it's going to go on forever. And Brandon Ralph is going to be just as great as Christopher Reeve was, but even better, you know. And then of course, yeah, I mean, it was a one and done kind of a thing. It was, there was no sequels, no nothing. It was, which... Not for a good reason either, you know what I'm saying? That movie made a lot of money. It did, yeah. For years, people would talk about what a bomb Superman Returns was, and I would always counter with it made more money than Batman Begins, guys. But I guess it just cost so much money. I I don't know. Fans were really vocal against Superman Returns. We could do a whole episode about that sometime if you wanted. But yeah, I mean, far worse Superman movies have been made... And so yeah, and gotten sequels. Yeah, I feel I feel bad for Routh because he's still handsome and young, and uh, I mean I guess he's got a second chance because he's doing this other DC property. But it's just it's just too bad because he should have been he should be on his fifth sequel to that show instead of us waiting for the sequel to freaking Man of Steel. But that's beside the point. We're talking TV. <laughs> Um, we were talking a long time, not about TV, weren't we? Yeah, and the TV that we're talking about is these these two, I guess you could say they're dueling properties. I don't know. We've got Flash, which seems to have really taken off. I think that's re- doing really well, and I could be wrong. I don't really know. But me and my family have been watching uh, Flash together as a family, and we've been watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. together as a family for the last while. And it seems there's, I don't know how to say it, like ebbs and flows, I guess. A lot of people in the family will be very excited about Flash for a while. And then maybe it'll change up and they'll be excited about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But it's always interesting as we sit down on a Sunday to watch these shows, which we've had. We watch them by way of Hulu. And, uh, you know, we can pick which one we want to watch first. And, and it's interesting to see when, what they want to see first, which one they're more interested in seeing how it's going to turn out. But uh, yeah, we, we have come to the end of the seasons of both of those shows. And um, I found that I really enjoyed both of them. I thought they both turned out well. Uh, I really liked the final episode of each of those shows. I think with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., didn't they do like a two-hour season finale? No. (laughs) They just showed the last two episodes on the same night and cut out the credits in between them. But, uh, you know, they'll do that a lot. Right. I mean, it was two episodes, but it was two-hour finale. I mean, they didn't... They did it all at once, which uh, was kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know if it's getting great ratings or why they decided to do that or, you know, whatever other show it was used to show along with was now uh, already canceled or something like that. I don't know why they would do that. But, yeah, how it turned out I thought was really interesting. Um, Which show do you think we should talk about first or should we just kind of go back and forth or what do you think? I don't know. I mean, we talked so much about Brendan Routh. I think we should probably talk about Flash first. Okay, uh, and and I imagine Bandon Routh was introduced on Arrow before we ever saw him on. Well, we know that he was before we ever saw him on Flash. Um, I watched Arrow when it was new, and uh, I probably watched it the same way you did. And the problem with Hulu is if you take too long in between episodes, episodes start to sh- to drop off. Yeah, and that's what happened with me and Arrow. Like the last episode that we hadn't seen dropped off, and I was like, "Oh well, uh, should we just go ahead?" Or and we're like, "Oh, we'll we'll catch it when it reruns." And then, of course, we never went back. But Flash, I saw from the very first episode, and liked it so much from the very first episode that I never missed a single one. Yeah, Flash 
uh, well, Barry Allen, anyway, seems like a much more likable character than uh, Oliver Queen. Oliver Queen is very much like Batman, whereas Flash seems a lot like Spider-Man. You know, he's kind of a likable, dorky loser, whereas Oliver Queen is this, you know, super rich, kind of heartless, you know, not emotional kind of a character. And so it's, I think it's a lot harder to get into Arrow than it is to get into Flash. You automatically just start rooting for Flash, but uh, you gotta do a lot more. I've seen uh, some episodes of Arrow, yeah. Like from the beginning or just the ones that crossed over with the Flash? No, I've seen some, I mean, not from the, I didn't watch it from the beginning, but my kids have watched it. So I've seen a fair amount of uh, the show. Oh, okay. I, well, I wondered if you had seen the episode where Barry first shows up. I think that I did see that one, yeah. Well, it, just this summer, after we watched The Last of Flash, my daughter decided she was going to binge watch the crap out of Arrow. So in like, in like two days, she watched two seasons of Arrow. Um, and then started moaning and, and complaining about the fact that season three wasn't available yet. Um, but yeah, I did see the first appearance of Barry. Like, they had some crime that happened and Barry Allen shows up out of the blue saying, oh yeah, I'm here from Central City. They sent me out to, because uh, we're having a similar crime or something in our place. So I did see that one. I don't know that I watched the whole episode, but I did see at least the part where he shows up and starts talking with him. And I think they had kind of a little bit of a thing with, uh, what is her name, Felicity? They tried to, you know, to make some kind of a love connection there since they were both lovable, dorky people. Um, the, the, the show Flash was a lot of fun from the very first episode. And Arrow was not. Arrow was a lot more gritty, and there was a lot more uh, intrigue and stuff going on with, you know, people having dark secrets and, you know, what really happened on the island and uh -huh. and that sort of thing. But there was something refreshingly light about The Flash. And, you know, it's just like, my name is Barry Allen, and I'm the fastest man alive. Uh, and, I mean, there was just a kind of a joy uh, in in the way he used his powers and in helping people. And it, you're right, it, it is similar to Spider-Man, to the, the the enjoyment he gets of going out there and do, doing his thing. I, I just felt like that really made the show... Uh, I don't want to say that it made it stand out, but it it kind of did. I mean, even a lot of the, the Marvel properties tend to be grim, and, and you know, it's... It's hard to balance that stuff when you when you want your bad guys to actually have weight and actually be threatening. You need to introduce at least some kind of danger and you know the the promise of of death and things like that in there. And it's hard to balance that. And it was really neat in Flash the way that they did. Now part of it was th that his power is just fun. Yeah, and I think the other part of it would be his support staff. Especially Cisco. Cisco is a really fun character. Uh, a really goofy kind of, another really nerdy, goofy kind of fun guy like Barry Allen, except for super smart. Uh, so we, we watched it. It was interesting because they have that overarching kind of uh, story arc that goes from the first show all the way through about the man in yellow and how this guy appeared and killed his mother in when Barry was a child and uh you know he's he's trying to find how you know he can solve this case because his dad was the one who was arrested and convicted for it and so he's been in prison his whole life and, uh, yeah, that's their big overarching storyline that they're going with. And we discover 
Uh, at, a certain, at first you think he's not. Well, we discover eventually that Dr. Harrison Wells, who has been basically the mentor for Barry, has been nursing him along this whole time. He's actually the man in yellow, uh, the reverse Flash, who killed Barry's mother. And the final episode had a lot of really weird stuff go on in it. I don't want it to sound like we didn't like the episode, because I think we already talked about this. Both of us really enjoyed it. But it, uh, there was like inconsistencies with it. <sighs> See if I can even remember exactly what happened, because it's now been like a month since I've seen the show. Oh, it's been longer for me. I, I, it feels like a long time. It's probably been two months then since I... Yeah, it could be. Yeah, Bear... So, Harrison Wells kidnaps Eddie Thawne, who is like his great, 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 whatever, grandfather. Because Harrison Wells' real name is... Eobard, Eobard Thawne. Professor Zoom. So he kidnaps Eddie, which... I guess is kind of turning regular tables. Usually you kidnap the girl, but instead he left Iris and kidnapped Eddie and took him somewhere. They're trying to find him and help me out here. So he, he reveals himself somehow and tells them that they have to make him a special time traveling ship. And they have to help him get back to his own time, or else he's going to kill Eddie? I don't know. I think they had already caught Reverse Flash and rescued Eddie. And oh, that's, Reverse that's Flash right. they, sort of tells uh, Barry, you know, he tells him his whole backstory of, of, you know, that they were enemies and he was chasing Barry. Or, or he went back in time and Barry chased after him and he was intending to kill Barry as a child and ended up killing his mother. Uh, and then being stuck in the past, and he couldn't go back to the future, and that's all he wanted to do was go back to the future. Uh, see, when they were having this conversation, I, I I was really intrigued because he talks about how much he hates the Flash. There's nobody he hates more than the Flash, but he's learned to care for Barry Allen, who is you know a younger version of the Flash kind of thing, and admire him and and enjoy helping him and stuff, and so he makes him this offer of if you will help me get back to my time you know i will help you go back and and save your mother right 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 yeah i remember now and it's my recollection and it could be totally wrong that he gives them some kind of plan for making a time travel device uh, uh something that will either open up a portal or a vehicle that will go into the past or, or go back to the future yeah, I think it's a vehicle that will go through the portal and take him to the future. And Barry has to run around really fast in that particle accelerator and then collide with a particle in there. And that will open up the wormhole that he can use to go back in time to save his mom. And I don't know if it was that whole episode or two episodes, but Barry has to weigh... He has to make the decision of whether to do this or not, because if if he collides with the particle at the wrong moment or whatever, it's going to destroy. I think it might was was going to destroy the world. Yeah, it might have even been destroy the universe. Like even the Martians and stuff were going to die if he if he did, it was going to turn the whole solar system into a black hole or something like that. It was right, just... and see that's not really fair to Martians. That Barry right. would make that decision, so he talks to people he, uh, uh, about you know what should I do and what sh you know what do you th what would you do in my place, uh, and to make a long story short, he decides to risk it. He decides he's going to go back. That it's important enough to save his mother. Uh huh. That that it's all worth it, and I I guess this is when I first have to scratch my head and say I, you know I'm not sure if this made the most logical sense. But at the time, I was just watching it passively and, you know, being affected by it. You know, this is what happens and then this is what the result is, you know. 
And it's only in retrospect where where I thought, well, is that the right? Really, you you you're willing to risk? And and didn't his father say, don't do it, don't go? Yeah, I think several people said that, and then other people said, oh, are you kidding? Of course you got to do it. Do it. Oh my gosh. So anyway, tell the tell what happens when he goes, if you don't mind. So he decides to go back in time. He decides to risk the entire universe uh, on the off chance that he can go back and save his mom. So he does it. It works out. He goes back in time. He finds himself in his bedroom when he's a child. And he sees the fish tank water go up in the air and freeze up in the air or whatever. And he realizes, oh, it's... It's the time that my mom is going to be killed by reverse flash. So he goes over and he looks out the door from his room and he sees flash and reverse flash kind of running around the room and they're duking it out and they're fighting and all this stuff. He sees his chance to run out there, grab his mom and run away. And he looks and when he sees this chance, then he also sees himself from... I don't know what you would call it. Other dimension, other other timeline, time, timeline, other timeline. Flash, older version of this Flash, sees him there looking out the door, and he shakes his head. And so our Flash, a Barry, sees this and decides that he needs to listen to his older version of himself and not save his mom. And so he goes back into his room and he closes the door and he sits down and he cries. And you had a problem with that, right? I did afterward. At the time, I was just like, no way. Uh, Because he lets his mother be murdered in the next room. And then he goes in when she's dying and he holds her hand and he is able, he takes off his mask and tells her, you know, that it's me and that I grew up to be somebody. Uh, and he's able to say goodbye to her. And to him, I guess that's enough. That's closure of some sort. And it was incredibly moving. Yeah, it's a nice moment. It's really special and moving and, and all that. And I can totally see that. I mean, like, I, we've, we've talked about this before. My mom died a long time ago when I was young. And, yeah, I mean, I was young. I didn't understand what it really meant, what it was going to mean. You know what I mean? I didn't take the time you know to build memories to to do stuff with my mom while I still could and I would love to be able to have that opportunity to at least go back and and say look mom I wound up being a fat podcaster one day (laughs) that's terrible well the question I asked you afterward and maybe it's an maybe it's not a sensitive question maybe it's it's not something for the show should I ask it Oh, you can. I think it's fine. Okay, so tomorrow, Pfizer announces that they have discovered the cure for cancer. And then it's going on sale the 1st of September. And you spend all of your time and your resources finding a way to go back to give your mother this cure for cancer through time travel. And when you get there to 25 years ago or whenever it was, an old Big Anklevich with a, a white beard is there waiting for you. And he's got a cane and he's not fat, but he does have a scar. And he says, don't do it. And then he disappears in a flash of light. And you're standing there with the cure to what killed your mom in your hand. Would you just turn around after spending all this time and all this risk to come back to, you know, to the 90s? Would you do as this old man, this stranger, said to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's weird. It's a... You would assume that the old man version of you must know something that you don't? Like, obviously, he came back in time. But in this case, it's different. I, I guess your example is a little different than... How, how so? Than the example. Because he actually talks to you? No, just that we know that this Flash doesn't really know the things that our Flash knows. Because this Flash got his powers in a different timeline much later on, and we're to assume that this Flash had a mother. Yeah, this Flash had a mother. He had 
he had a different life. He came back in time to save himself from being killed by a uh, reverse flash. And he gets himself out of there, his young self out of there, uh, and saves him. But he doesn't really know any of what happened to his young self. He's, it's not like where you're talking, where there's an old version of me that obviously he, he has to know something. He's basically the future of the me that went back with the Pfizer pill, you know, that saved my mom and then everything turned out worse off than it would have otherwise. But you don't know this because you didn't actually get to talk to him. He just said, don't do it. And then he was gone. True. And, and alternate universe Barry didn't even go that far. He just shook his head. Right. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's really weird. I guess you must... And maybe just because it's an older version of you, you just assume that it knows better. I, yeah, I guess so. But this... The, the natural tendency for adult Barry Allen seeing a young Barry Allen in a different version of his costume from a time when he didn't have those powers, his reaction should have been... What? 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 Who is that? What? How is this possible? Instead, you know, he shakes his head. He knows somehow what's going on. I, I just, I, I, I don't get it. But what I really don't get is that Barry would just give up. That he would. I mean, he risked the universe, right, to get there and do this thing. And just a shake of the head was all it took to get him to quit that. And you know what? If if I were showrunner. I would dedicate several conversations in season two to this, right. to what went through Barry's head and all that stuff. And you can explain it away. It's not impossible. You can say that Barry had all of these re reservations when he went back in time. And he, he, in the back of his mind, he's like, I shouldn't be doing this, but I, I would hate myself forever if I didn't try. So I'm going to do it. And then when he got there, all it took was some little thing to say, you know what? You're right. I shouldn't have done this. I, it's wrong. Uh -huh. to, to try and fit. I, but it, it's just so hard to, to say because he's, he's trying to do a good thing. And it's not a selfish thing. I mean, maybe try, risking the universe for his mom is a selfish thing, but, it, but it's not. You know, he's trying to help somebody who didn't do wrong to anyone who, who suffered for a, a bad person's choices. You know what I mean? It's not even as... It's not what your mom went through where, you know, I, I would assume that cancer is a natural thing that happens to people. It, you know, a guy in an alley didn't give her cancer. Right. Barry's mother was taken from him. He was trying to do a heroic thing with his powers. You know, the one thing that we, you would wish forever. I wish I had had my powers when I was 10 or 9 or however old that was so that I could have. It would, it would eat away at you. Okay. And, and you know, I know it sounds like I don't like... Or maybe it hasn't sounded that way yet, but it's going to. Like, I didn't <laughs> like the last episode at all. Um, there were people online who really hated it. I was just surprised by it. And like I said, it was really sad. And it, See, it's not fair because Barry's father is the one who is blamed for his mother's death. So it's not just, you know, his mother's life that is extinguished that day. His father has spent the rest of his life in prison, and he's still such a good man that when Barry's like, Dad, I've got these powers, I can bust you out of here in a second, and nobody can do anything about it, he says no. Right, yeah, it's, uh, basically he would save two lives if he saved the one. His father doesn't die, but his life is wasted away in a cell unjustly because of it. But yeah, so that's what Barry does. He doesn't save his mother. And yeah, you say that there were people online who really hated it. This is online we're talking about, so of course they really hated it. That's what people online do. But uh, then Barry comes back to the present. And now he's got to fulfill his bargain with the devil and give Eulbard Thawne his time travel ship so that he can get out of there. Yeah. And when does the Jay Garrick helmet come into it? Or has that already happened? I think that happens right right about the time he comes back. Now, what is that? Explain that to people who are less nerdy than you. Well, it's impossible to actually explain it. Because 
Jay Garrick was the golden age comic book Flash. Right. From like the 1940s. And then they brought back the Flash in the 1960s in what's called the Silver Age, you know, of, of superheroes when, you know, Marvel was about and the Justice League started and all this stuff. And, and, and that was Barry Allen, the one that we know from the show. But in the context of the television show, there was never another Flash. There was never a Jay Garrick. And it seems like they would have dropped that name or dropped that history in some way before then if, if that's what it meant. Yeah, it was just weird. He, there, there's the time hole, whatever, the wormhole, we'll call it. And the helmet that flies, it, it looks like Mercury's helmet, right? That's what the Jay Garrick helmet is sure, like. Sure, yeah. So Mercury's helmet comes flying out and lands on the ground. And Eobard Thawne says, well, that's my cue that it's time for me to go. <laughs> okay. I don't know exactly what the point of that was, what they were trying to to say or what they were getting at with it. Okay, so what happens from there? Again, it's been two months. I've forgotten. Well, see, this is the part that we were talking about a few minutes ago, and I, I couldn't remember what led up to this. My guess was that Barry got back, and, you know, he, he doesn't really want to talk about what happened, but he says, you know, we, we I said I would let him go, and I'm going to let him go. And then what? Does does Reverse Flash set off some kind of doomsday device? Does he threaten the world? Does he does he try to do something? Why does his great 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 grandfather do the thing that he does? I can't I I think something happened and the the portal closed and Reverse Flash was unable to actually leave. And he's like, oh, F you guys, I'm going to kill you all now. And I remember there was a bit of a fight between Flash and Reverse Flash. And it looked like Reverse Flash was going to get the better of them all. Okay. And then out of the blue, Eddie Thawne, who was his great-great-great-great-great-grandfather to Eobard Thawne, shoots himself. He's now killed himself, and now Eobard Thawne has no great-great-grandfather, and he's timeline has been cut out he's never going to exist because eddie kills himself before he can have the child that will eventually 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 have can you stop doing that please that, <laughs> that is eobard thon okay so he can't go back to the future right he if he goes back and to the future, he will cease to exist, right? Is that how they did it? You would think that's how they would do it, but instead, no. He just kind of winked out of existence. It was kind of like... Uh, it, it was more like a Back to the Future thing, where, oh, I've endangered my parents from getting together. Now, oh, look, my brother is already fading out of the picture, and now it's getting to me. Oh, my gosh, I'm fading out of the picture. Except for that it was nothing like Back to the Future. Right. That's Back true. to the Future works in every conceivable way <laughs> through repeated viewings. He just winks out of existence. I mean, he, he, he like demolecularizes or something like that. He dies. He gets dusted. And But nothing else changes. If he was never born then Barry's mother was never killed and Barry's father never went to jail for her murder and he was never raised by Iris's dad and never even really got to know Iris and never had the accident that was orchestrated by Eobard Thong that made him into the Flash. Yeah, there was... The, even the place that they were standing in, which was that particle accelerator should vanish, should go away. It should just turn into, I don't know, a, a bunch of... a regular city block or something. You know, whatever would have been there had Harrison Wells slash Eobard Thon not been... not made it happen. So, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things. Like, you, you once told me... I haven't read this book, but you read it once. It was an Orson Scott Card book called Pathfinder, I believe it was called, which was about a guy who had 
basically it was about time travel. And you complained mightily. You talked my friggin' ear off about how upset you were about the way that they dealt with time travel and paradoxes. And basically the idea was that you would, could go back in time and we'll say there's the hope diamond, right? You could go back in time and steal the hope diamond and then take it to your, your time traveling lair and put the home di hope diamond in your time traveling lair. And then you could go back in time to the day before and steal the Hope Diamond again and then go back to your time-traveling lair and now you have two Hope Diamonds. The one that you stole before didn't just vanish because you stole it the day before. Somehow you, you removed it from the equation. You removed it from the time stream or whatever. And now it could survive as long as you didn't like try and take it back with you again or something like that. Then it would, I suppose, go away. <sighs> and you didn't like that particular idea. Although that idea, I suppose, is sound as long as you don't take it back. You know, you, you don't enter it back into the uh, equation and make it disappear. Right. Well, I, I, I guess what bothers me is that there are no consequences whatsoever for traveling in time. You steal the Hope Diamond and it doesn't change anything because you can steal the Hope Diamond a thousand times and somehow there are magically a thousand Hope Diamonds. And Card's a good writer. He gave us an explanation for how it all made sense and how the time that you went back to may not necessarily be the exact time that you went back to the time before, you know, and that there might be myriad multiverses and all that horse shit that Michael Crichton wrote about in Timeline. But it really, really bothered me. And if I were super smart, like Brian Lincoln, I could say that that's no more ridiculous than Kyle Reese going back in time, being sent by John Connor to father John Connor in 1984. But I can easily get my ha head around the Terminator plot. I just can't get my head around the, the Orson Scott Card one. It just... One makes logical sense based on how I know the world works, even though time travel doesn't work in the world. And the other doesn't. I, of course, I have to do a little bit of mental gymnastics and say that the John Connor that sent Kyle Reese back in time was fathered by someone else, probably. Because if not, why do you have to send Kyle Reese in the pa uh, to, back to save Sarah Connor from being killed when you know she won't be killed? Because you were born. But anyway, uh, I'm, that is... Yeah, that kind of stuff gets troublesome. But it seems like with this show, they tried to do... They tried to have their cake and eat it too, as it were. Where they wiped some things out of the timeline, but not all things out of the timeline. Like we were complaining about, you know. it's They went back... Basically, what should have happened is either Eddie kills himself and then reverse flashes like, oh, great, now I can't go back to the future ever because if I do, I will immediately cease to exist. So now I'm stuck here. Which or, I think is cool, man. It cuts yeah, off is... any escape route. Any esca You know what I mean? It, 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 and it makes him want vengeance, and it makes him even more dangerous. Yeah, it would be a cool way to go. Um, or what they should have done is Eddie shoots himself, and yeah, everything changes. Anything that he ever had a hand in is now changed. What happens instead is nothing changes, but then they hear like a thump outside or something like that. They go outside and they find that they've created a black hole anyways. And now uh, there's this big black hole up above Central City and Flash has to go run around in the reverse of the spin of the black hole or something like that as fast as possible and make the black hole stop sucking things in or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. That's the cliffhanger moment for the end of the season. And, you know, they can still have their be consequences to what happened 
beyond just, oh, the universe is going to end. Because we both know the universe is not going to end. What? But, you know, it could be a Star Trek kind of techno babble explanation of everybody that was in this room was shielded from the, the changes in the timeline, but everybody outside of this room will know a totally different world than the one where, that we knew, where, you know, X and Y and Z never happened. And if you go out there, you will be able to find Harrison Wells alive with his wife because they never had the car accident that was orchestrated by Eobard Thawne and all that. And only the people in this room know how the other timeline worked. Or you can say, okay, the timeline is going to, there's going to be ripples. And every time one of these ripples happens, things are going to change. And what we've got to do is we've got to remember who we are and remember how we are to one another and not, and not let our world fall apart around us. Or You know, they still could do something like that. I would really like to see the actor come back, but as a good guy, just, just for fun. Yeah, it'll be interesting, I guess, to see exactly what they do. I think what, what may happen is he may go into that black hole or whatever, save everything... Then come back to find that all that stuff has happened. Everything has changed. That things have been put back to the way they would have been. He'll have a mom. He'll have his dad out of prison. But why would he be the Flash then? Un- uh, unless there was a Jay Garrick now in the past that had some kind of accident. And everybody knows he's like a Captain America in their world. A hero who was around 50, 60 years ago. And in a, an attempt in 2014 to recreate that accident that gave Jay Garrick his powers, Barry Allen got the powers. It could be, or it could be just that, like uh, what's-his-face Harrison Wells says, he sped up the timeline or whatever so that Flash got his powers a little earlier because he needed him to get them earlier. Maybe we'll just get to where the timeline would have been when he finally did get around to making the particle accelerator and he got his powers the original way. I don't know, man. I, that, I guess, seems kind of unlikely because <laughs> then we'd have to jump like five or six or I don't know how many years into the future, which is unlikely. I don't know. It, it, I, I remember when we first had this conversation right after having watched these shows... And I said, you know, that would be really brave of them to try and do something where they just, you know, change everything all around. Because, yeah, it would really shake up the status quo and really be uh, different. But I doubt that they'll do that because this is the Flash show. This is not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I could really see going for that because, I mean, we saw season one how season one ended, and what happened to start out season two. Season two of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was really different from what they established in season one. And it was kind of hard to get into it at first. It was, it was a little difficult because everything was so much different than it was before. We had, you know, Fitz and Simmons who were basically one character when the show started. Now they were at odds. They, they were against each other we had ward now as hannibal lecter in the in the <laughs> basement we had you know sky is now all full go, you know going for it and she wants to be a a real shield agent and now our uh, father figure of colson is now the director of all of shield instead of just the head of this little team keeps going down the line all the things that changed well they also introduced a bunch of new characters in that season premiere and we were expected to just go for it because a bunch of those characters were the new leads of the show or were part of that family now you know when did bobby morse get introduced i think she came in either the first or second it was the episode where simmons was in the the Hydra building, working as a scientist there, and they were figuring out that she was actually still sympathetic to S.H.I.E.L.D., and they were going to get her and recondition her and force her to be like Agent 33 and do their bidding. 
and Bobby Morse was like head inquisitor or whatever. And so we think at first that she's really screwed and then it turns out Bobby Morse is not head inquisitor. She's also a shield double agent and she saves her. And that's when we first saw her. I want to say that was probably episode two, not episode one. We also saw, yeah, some other uh, new characters. I remember that Lucy Lawless was an agent and I think she gets killed off in like the very first episode. Which was weird. Because she was, you know, the only one of those new characters that they introduced that we had seen before on other stuff. And uh, I think she was the leader of their group, wasn't she? Yeah, she was like the leader. And then she wound up, uh, yeah, dying off really fast. And But yeah, so so there was, there was lots of characters brought in. There was, uh, yeah, just tons of change from season one to season two to the point where it was difficult for me to get into it because of how different it was. Yeah, I don't, I th- I don't think that, a, uh, I don't see Flash doing something like that. It makes me think of the, the other time travel episode that we had with Flash, when Cisco finds out that Harrison, Harrison Wells. Wells is actually reverse Flash. And then Wells comes down, confronts him, and kills him and i thought oh my gosh they killed cisco that sucks because i liked cisco and i expected them to have something some kind of thing where like oh he's not quite dead yet or let's get him to the hospital quick or something but instead he was just dead and i thought oh that's interesting i i I didn't expect that that really is kind of a bummer and then barry goes back in time by accident and every he, he changes the way he does things and Cisco never dies. Well, that's also the episode where he told Iris that he was the Flash. Right. And sh- she's like, yay, love. And yeah. I was just, I'm not horrified by it, but I was just like, holy cow, how is this happening? I was not smart enough, which is weird because of the hundreds of thousands of hours of television I've watched, I would, I should have learned. Oh, okay. This is going to be a time travel episode, guys. <laughs> this is going to be a reset. Yeah. Thing. And they went back in time and they turned everything back to normal. And it was like, uh, you know, the end of an episode of The Simpsons. We're like, oh, okay, now we'll go back to our normal life. It'll be exactly like it was before. And all those big changes were nothing. I assume that that's probably going to happen again. You know, when season two starts up, I don't expect them to have the kind of balls balls, that they have on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Balls, balls. And I'm, I'm curious to see how Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is different from Season 2 to Season 3. Uh, it took a long time for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to get to a place that I liked. It took a, a while before it got to the point where I was just like, okay, this is getting interesting. It wasn't until the real S.H.I.E.L.D. showed up and we had some kind of an interesting uh, bad guy or whatever you want to call it to focus on that... Uh, I finally started to really dig season two as much as I dug season one. Well, that's a long stretch, though. What did you feel during the rest of the time? There were elements. There were things that were good. There was I cared about the characters enough now that I wanted to keep watching, even if I wasn't necessarily liking the way things went. You know, I still wanted to see what happened to Fitz and Simmons and so forth. And there was, there was interesting things. There was some elements that were cool. But yeah, it was a long time before I really started to get into it as much as I had in the first season. I, you know, I guess I can agree with you there. Although I never felt like the second season had as the same lows that the first season did. Oh, yeah. Maybe it didn't ever have as high a highs as it did when season one got into the Captain America Winter Soldier tie-ins. Right. But I just, I really enjoyed season two, and they introduced Edward James Olmos as, uh, was it Gonzalez? I think so. And, you know, he seemed kind of like a hard ass. He, I don't know if it's just Edward James Olmos. He is, you know, he is just this grouchy, I mean, he's just... Commander Adama kind of guy. He is, yeah. He just, they they painted him, and uh, whereas Coulson is just so touchy feely and a sweet guy and all that, I just you know I was it was not going to surprise me when Gonzalez turned out to have, 
you know, skeletons in his closet, and you know, and it was he was going to turn out to be some megalomaniacal douche. And at the same time, they're building up Sky's mother as you know this saintly. I mean, not there's not another word for what she was. I mean, maybe there is another word, but saintly is the word I'm using. And she was just this super altruistic, peaceful Buddhist type character. Right. You know, just wants harmony and and, and she wants to elevate all around her kind of thing. Endlessly patient. And we had met her father, um, who uh, is the comic book character Mr. Hyde. Calvin Zabo, right? And he was just, (laughs) from like the first moment we met him, he was crazy. You remember? It, it was just, it was always un- the, right under the surface. He was ready to just lose his mind. And, and if it hadn't been Kyle McLaughlin that played him, I would have been like, oh, geez, another scene with this guy going, my daughter. And I just, uh, by the end of that se- second season, those three characters had all shifted in who they were. We, are, we It's revealed that Gonzalez is a good man and he's on the up and up and, and that her mother is evil. You know, she's some kind of life force sucking vampire creature, which I <laughs> I don't know if they laid the foundation for that. <laughs> but it was just like when she first sucked somebody's life force out, I was just like, what the crap? Where did that come from? And then her father, you know, he has this transformation. He finally takes his his Mr. Hyde elixir and he goes through his physical transformation and turns into some kind of homo habilis. Or, you know, he's some kind of throwback, missing link type character. And then Coulson talks to him, and he's able to be reasoned with, and he joins Coulson's team as this Neanderthal guy. And it turns out that he really does love his daughter. And I I loved those reversals. I didn't see them coming, and I I just, I loved him, especially the stuff with the dad. And uh, he gets project tahiti at the end and sky comes to visit him and he doesn't realize that that's his daughter oh my gosh i just i was bawling sir <laughs> yeah that that end was really good where he's just like he's got his little uh veterinary practice and he's like oh bring your dogs on by we love each and every one of them and he says it's a magical place because, yeah, Coulson, how many times would you think Coulson said that before, just in the first, like, eight episodes of the show? I, I don't know. He may, he may have only said it, like, four times or whatever. But the time that he says it, and he, like, hesitates as he's saying it, was the time when it really jumped out at me that, oh, my gosh, he always says this word for word. Yeah. But, yeah, so so he's out of the show, the Calvin Zabo, the father. Um, but then they they do the, the stuff with the black glob slime in human eating weapon at the very very end of the show and it eats simmons <laughs> that part was so rough because you felt i mean first of all fitz and fitz simmons was my favorite character when it first started out i loved fitz simmons when they were still just one character and they were so cute and they were such good friends and you just loved them and then at the very end of season one they're about to die and Fitz decides to give his life to save Simmons. And also while doing that, he decides he needs to confess to her how he feels about her. And then it turns out that he lives, but in a diminished capacity. He's had issues and he's got some kind of brain damage. But the funny thing is, I don't think Fit or I don't think Simmons had any problem with that it was more the the changing of their relationship you know what i mean she was weirded out by fitz going from friend to more than friend in her mind and they had a really hard all of season two was kind of them at odds and it got to the point where simmons was just she'd become a bad character to where you were just like afraid of what she was going to do next well and suddenly they introduced this anti-alien bias that she had yeah she didn't like anything what they call them metahumans on the flash what do they call them on on agents of shield enhanced maybe i think that's what they called them uh, on uh whatchamacallit on the avengers i can't remember if they were calling them that obviously they eventually started calling them inhumans but that wasn't what they called them to begin with well there's this yeah there's this moment 
when Fitz discovers that Sky has powers, and because of the stuff that Simmons has said ab- about not being able to trust people with powers, he keeps it to himself. Whereas normally, you know, he would share everything with her. They were they were one mind. That it was really cool to see the way they interacted when they were together. Yeah, the way they would finish each other's sentences and all that kind of stuff. They were basically one character, and now they aren't. And yeah, that was such a shift. And it got to the point where you almost didn't like Simmons. And there is a moment in one of the last episodes, it wasn't the last episode, but there's the thing that the real S.H.I.E.L.D. is trying to get from Coulson. And it's this cube that has all this information on it. And it's coded in a certain way so that no one can look at it except for Coulson. And Simmons actually helps Fitz get away with this and get it out. And the whole time you think that's not what's going to happen. And so when it does happen, it's a surprise. And it's all of a sudden you, you, it, it, that one act changes your mind towards Simmons. She's not, not turning into a monster after all. She can see that. Uh, you know, she, she can see things the way that we all see things and isn't just ruled by her fear and she can do things right even though she might be scared, I guess. And suddenly, yeah, Simmons has changed back and then, the, you know, they do all this stuff and, and it gets to the very end and the, the last scene is that one where, yeah, they're there, they're looking at that black oil slick thing And they're talking and stuff like that. And they're finally, after the entire season, talking about what they're facing this issue that, you know, Fitz confessed his love to to her at the end of season one. They're finally getting to that and talking it over. And uh, they decide, hey, well, why don't we try out dinner? I'll take you to dinner. (laughs) And she's like, oh, is that okay? And they're finally going to do that. And then Fitz walks out the door to like basically go and make a reservation. And this oil slick and eats this oil her. Slick and eats this oil her. slick and eats this oil her. And people eats say her. that Joss Whedon has nothing to do with this show. <laughs> and you're just like, come on. It's, it's, it's that thing that you've been waiting for forever. And then the second it happens, they snatch it out from under you again. And I'm assuming... That Simmons is not gone for good. I'm assuming that somehow she's going to come back out of that thing. But, but she's not going to be the same. Well, what, if, what if she has powers now? Yeah, I'm willing to bet she may have power. She may become the stuff. You know what I mean? That stuff may be inside of her. or what? She may become like a freaking Dark Phoenix or something where... Now she's so powerful and so dangerous that they have to kill her off. I don't know. All I know is that Fitz and Simmons are in for more tragedy. I'm certain of that much. And it kind of bums me out. (laughs) I guess guess it has to be the way it's going to be because this is a TV show and it has to keep going. And so things have to happen. But you, you want them to get that happy ending, which they can't have because the show would have to end... Wait, why? Why, ending. why would the show have to end if Fitz Sim- and Simmons fell in love? The show isn't about that. It, True. It's not like it's... It's not Castle. Castle or something like that where it's all about them. Like that, and that show that your wife got canceled, Pushing Daisies, that whole show was about if the girl with the man's name and the man get get together, then the show is over. But Fitz and Simmons having feelings for each other or whatever is is it's not even like in the top 10 plot lines of the show it's just mean that they wouldn't let them be together <laughs> yeah i suppose i mean it gives you something i i wouldn't be surprised if that's what our big overarching story is for the next year is simmons is now the big baddie well see you yeah. never watched I, I bet you never watched a single episode of angel but they did that on Angel with one of the characters. And I'm sure you know that they did that on Buffy with one of the characters. Uh, so it just seems to be a thing that Whedon likes to do. 
I, I, I mean, I like it. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a staple. It's something that we've seen happen time and time again in comic books. And Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a comic show. And so is it something that we can all ask ourselves, too, in the same way that I was asking myself what I would do in Barry Allen's shoes or more specifically what you would do if you became godlike, if you had these powers and you could do anything, what would you do? And all that stuff. And and yeah, for a character like Simmons, who's, you know, a nurturer and scientist and, a, a you know, just a, a, an all around good character. Maybe that's what they were building toward by putting this change in her personality during season two so that it wouldn't come as a huge surprise when she turns out to be evil. Like, you know, was done in a certain movie trilogy that I'm not going to bring up again. I think it would. It would be really cool if, if there were two personalities in there. And one of them is the old Simmons, and then the other is this alien thing that has been sent to Earth to eliminate the Inhumans, right? It was a Kree weapon. Yeah, so I'm willing to bet that it'll be quite different than the way Season 2 ended, just judging from, you know, the, the space between Season 1 and Season 2 changed so much. I bet Season 2 to Season 3 will have uh, more craziness for us. Yeah, you know, we should have said at the very beginning of this episode that you should watch these shows. You should you should uh, stream them or whatever and then participate in the conversation, you know, in the forums or what, you know, then listen to the episode. Because, I mean, yeah, we were talking about the things that happen at the very end of the whole year's worth of episodes. and Yeah, and the good he- thing about that, too, is that Netflix has already made season two of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. available. So if you have Netflix, you can stream season one and season two straight on through. So if you wanted to listen to the show and understand what the hell we're talking about, if you haven't been watching it, yeah, your your chance is ready. I have my friend at work, he watched season one of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but the, last year they didn't make season one available until somewhere around like October or something like that. Right, season two had already begun, and they and season yeah season two had begun and progressed past the point where you could catch up, like watching episodes on Hulu or online or whatever. That's just mean. And so he saw season one, and then was unable to continue from there. So now that season two has been available, he was actually telling me that he was in the middle of watching. Pushing Daisies, the the second uh, set of discs from season two, and then all of a sudden Agents of Shield became available, and they just like oh dropped Pushing Daisies like a hot potato and went straight in to watching uh, all the episodes. And he's basically watched like I don't know the, almost the entire season. He's he's he said he just saw the episode where they reveal the secret hidden helicarrier, which that's like second to last episode, something like that. So he's really close to being done already. And the funny thing is he did the exact same thing when he was watching my discs of Pushing Daisies. He was watching them, and then Daredevil Daredevil came out, and he dropped (laughs) Pushing Daisies like a hot potato and watched all of Daredevil and then went back and finished Pushing Daisies. So Marvel just keeps putting stuff onto Netflix right at the perfect time to... It's good. They've got a, they've got a partnership with Netflix. It's cool to to see. I don't know. I, I really enjoyed Agents of Shield, and uh, I've talked to lots of people that dropped the show. We've we've had this conversation before. There were a lot of people that thought that it was supposed to be Avengers the series every week, and uh, didn't like it. And you know, I I I never felt that there were moments that were good, and there were moments that were not so good. But I've been watching a bunch of shows this year. Way more television than I normally watch. And yeah, it's always a joy to watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, it just the quality tends to be higher. The quality of the writing tends to be higher than most of these other shows that I watch. Yeah, and, and the uh, season finale didn't have any logical inconsistencies that you had to go, eh, well, I guess I won't say anything about that like Flash's season finale did, which... I guess is a plus. But I like both of those shows, and I like the way their seasons end in both cases, so I don't know. I would suggest that you watch both of them if you can. And yeah, I guess the field, if, if you like to watch 
all superhero related shows the the field is getting crowded uh, <laughs> like you said at the start there's going to be the legends of tomorrow which i think is a crappy title but <laughs> there's going to be that one there's arrow there's flash there's super girl that's coming out which is supposedly set in the same universe as flash and arrow and legends of tomorrow but is the one that will have no crossover because it's on a different network. Then why why have it be in the same universe at all? Yeah, I don't know. And then, of course, there's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. There's going to be another season of Agent Carter. There is Daredevil. Uh, what comes up next? What's the next of those four? Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. Do you know when that one comes out? Is that going to be soon? Uh, it's not. I don't think it's till December. But uh, well, December's pretty soon, though. I know that it's been made already, uh, and and it was called AKA Jessica Jones, and the comic book was called Alias Jessica Jones, but now it's just called Marvel's Jessica Jones. Which is a totally lame name, Jessica Jones. I'm sorry, it's too generic of a name <laughs> to just. It's it's like when they changed the name of a uh, John Carter of Mars. Well, first they, they took Princess of Mars, changed it to John Carter of Mars, and then just changed it to John Carter. John Carter's too generic of a name. You can't just call a movie John Carter. Even James Bond was never just called James Bond. It, was, it always had some kind of a name. That I'm, I'm sure they could have come up with something better than just calling it Jessica Jones. But Well, it's, it's not. It's it called Marvel's, Marvel's Jessica Jones. Yeah. We call it Marvel's Jessica Jones, I suppose, gives it an audience anyway, so it should be fine. That'll be fun to see uh, that show because I know so little about Jessica Jones that it'll, it'll all be new to me. It'll be like, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, probably. Uh, and then after, Mar after, after Jessica Jones, we get Luke Cage's show and, you know, Daredevil Season 2 is going to happen next year. Iron Fist gets his own show. And then there's going to be a mini series of the Defenders, so it's a lot of television. Super. Yeah. TV. So it, I'm I'm sure it'll get difficult to see it all, unless you're like my kids, which, man, sometimes I I would like to be able to have the time to waste that they have again. I remember being a kid and just yeah, I'm mean, just watching everything, every stupid thing, watching every episode of friggin' Growing Pains. Even the dumb shows, like Too Close for Comfort, you know, I watched them all, and now I don't have time for any of that stuff. But my kids, man, like I said, one of my daughters watched both seasons, Arrow, in two days. And my other daughter has just, just decided to start watching Heroes, the TV show, which went away, and is like, it's coming back, isn't it? yeah. A, a Heroes Reborn or something like that? Yeah, so there's that too. That show's coming back, which is another superhero show. Yeah, she started watching that. Has made her way almost all the way through season one already of that show. <sighs> I don't know, man. I guess if you have time like that, then there's not too many superhero shows. But if you don't have all the time in the world to spare, then uh, could be more difficult keep up with all of this stuff. I'm sure we're not going to be able to see all of them. I still haven't even finished Daredevil yet. No, I haven't I'm either. I'm still only on episode four, which I know is at least two episodes <laughs> behind you. Yeah, I think I finished episode seven. But it's fine because there's only a few of them. And if it takes me six months to watch them, I, I feel better than if... Like your daughter watching 44 episodes of something in two days. <laughs> so, there is that. But the thing is that I will quickly develop a backlog here pretty soon. The real problem with Daredevil is that it's just so damned violent that I can't watch it with my kids. Why do you That's have to what... watch it with your kids, though? Well, it's just easier that way. I kept up with Flash and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because it was a thing that we all did every Sunday. Oh, it was, okay, okay it's time to watch shows. But I can't do that with Daredevil. It's too violent to show it to my 11-year-old or my 3-year-old. Holy crap. I mean, he only sometimes would sit through Flash and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Most of the time, we were just trying to get him to 
play quietly enough that we could still hear what was being said. But, oh my gosh, I'm not going to let them see Daredevil and see like people getting spikes driven through their brain and their heads crushed in car doors repeatedly. So yeah, I have to watch it when I have time that I can watch a show by myself. Does that time ever take place? It's really rare. That's why I'm only on episode four of a show that came out, what, two and a half, three months ago? So, yeah, there's that. And I assume that Jessica Jones will probably be a similar vein. Oh, I would think so, but... And Luke Cage and... I imagine, Fist I imagine the stuff with Purple Man is going to happen on there. Which, again, is something I shouldn't know if I don't know anything about Jessica Jones. Uh, let's cut that part out so it sounds like I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's that. It's, it's cool that there's that much stuff to look forward to. Um, I'm excited, but, yeah, also daunted. They're challenging me to maintain my geek cred and watch all this crap. I dare you. You can't be a real geek if you haven't seen this all. We're going to keep going and make it impossible. It's a uh, an embarrassment of riches, sir. Yeah, it really is. There's so much genre stuff on television. I mean, so much, many other shows that we could talk about that uh, are on that, you know, we would probably enjoy if we watched them. Yeah, and, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing, know, that whole thing. We're, we're going, we, so, we would have to stop being producers and be just consumers. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure we'll be back with more episodes about uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Flash and probably these other new shows. Maybe we'll talk about Supergirl. We might have a reason to do that. Stay tuned. See what we bring you in the future. Maybe someday we'll even talk about Highlander. I mean, it could happen. Cheap it could crap. happen. All right, man. <laughs> that, that sounds like a threat. <laughs> so I'm going to close this episode. <laughs> All right. So thanks for listening, everybody. And stay tuned to see what's coming down the line. I'm Big Anklevich. I'm Rish Outfield. Why not? Yeah. Why not watch Highlander 2, The Quickening? That's right. Why not? Because it's a giant undulating turd. That's why not. Oh, yeah, that's probably a good reason. I hadn't considered that one. <laughs> see you, folks. That Gets My Goat is produced under Comrade Cardman's Average Use and Non Commercial No Deliveries 3.0 license. But that will be our little secret.